okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Um, I'm Joe Salomon. Um, up to a month ago, I was an architect in the SIF team in Red Hat, and now I am part of the emerging technology team in the office of the CTO in Red Hat. Laura. Hey, and my name is Laura Flores. I'm part of the Rados core team at Red Hat, and the things I've worked on in the past have been, uh, or, and still am working on our um, telemetry, the manager module, and um, I've done some work for Blue Store, and I do um, a lot of work for upstream testing to validate uh, patches um, and other uh, core Rados related things. Um, and for the past few months, uh, Josh and I have been working on um, this, uh, the new read balancer, which we'll be giving a presentation on today. So, uh, as Laura said, we're going to uh, give a presentation on the new read balancer, uh, which are going to be introduced in the RIF uh, release. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, so, what is uh, 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 motivation uh, and why it uh, comes only now? So, uh, the, the, the in distributed storage system, uh, the, uh, under high load, we see that the performance is uh, following the weakest link in the chain effect. So, uh, if we put uh, more uh, load on a single OSD, we actually block the entire system because uh, other OSDs could not perform in their uh, full uh, uh, capacity. Um, we have a balancer, the existing balancer, which we call capacity balancer, which makes sure that uh, the capacity is split evenly over the OSDs. Uh, not evenly, but that all the OSDs are full in this, to the same extent because the system is as full as the fullest device. This means that if all the OSDs have the same capacity, the capacity is also balanced well uh, evenly across the OSDs. But there is a problem when the, all the devices are not uh, with the same capacity. We will touch this a bit later. Um, this uh, means the, the the capacity balancer uh, also means that the right operation are uh, pretty well balanced, at least when the device is on the same size. But nothing uh, was done for read balancing, and the reason is that uh, actually read balancing uh, the, the crash creates pretty balanced reads on a larger on larger clusters. Uh, but to explain more why we need the read balancer now. So uh, we started by tackling the, the balancing process uh, even before we started to do the read balancing. We also tackled some problems with the existing capacity balancing. So uh, first of all, we, we collected a lot of OSD map files so we could do uh, uh, testing on various system. Uh, actually, some of them are production systems, some development systems. It's a smaller cluster, larger clusters. Uh, and the second thing, we refactoring, refactored the existing balancer code, the function called calc pg app maps, because it was really difficult to understand. It was like more than 1500 lines, not easy lines to read with go to's in the middle. Now, uh, it's, uh, we refactored it to smaller pieces, so it would be easier to, to touch and change. And this is also a call out to people uh, who hear this and are interested in the capacity balance uh, and saw the code uh, from previous versions before Quincy. This was added to Quincy. Uh, saw the code and decided they don't want to touch the code because it's too complex. Try it again. It is simpler now. And if you have good ideas on how to do better capacity balancing, uh, you are welcome. And then the third thing is. Uh, to create workload balancer, which is doing, uh, taking into account uh, the read operations and 
we have plans that we're going to explain, but we decided to start small on Reef version and to do only the simplest thing. Uh, it works on a pool by pool basis. And the reason for this is that uh, each pool represents different type of workload, read, reads versus writes. And therefore, uh, let's assume that we, ha we have read only pool and write only pool. Uh, if we take the PGs together and decide to put on each OSD the same number of PGs, but we don't care from which pool, we will create fluctuations uh, over there. We want to have the same number of PGs from the pool that do write only, also the same number for PGs from the pool that does read only. Otherwise, uh, this can't work. So we're doing this on pool per pool basis. Next slide, please. So uh, uh, we talk about capacity balancers. That's existing balancer. It's a functional requirement. We must do it. Uh, unlike the read balancer, which is a performance requirement, so the system performs well, it works well, but with less performance capacity balancer, uh, without it, the system uh, getting full too early and we, we lose uh, capacity of the entire cluster. Balancing is expensive because we need to move data and during this process also we lose performance. Uh, we don't, so we don't want to do something which it changes dynamically. We want to set uh, the PGs and how the PGs are mapped to OSD and work like this and not, otherwise we could have done something which is a more dynamic and changes over time and uh, it behaves better when the system is really empty and uh, it starts changing when the system starts to fill up. The overhead of doing this in terms of work and energy that we need to do to move data is, is a lot and therefore we try to do, to balance once or once per pool or once per adding uh, for configuration where we add OSD, when we have pools and the number of OSD and the number of PGs, we do the mapping and continue with this and it's it's a static thing. Uh, and it balances the right performance if all devices are homogeneous, but not uh, the read performance. And next slide. So uh, the read balancer, unlike this, first of all, it's performance requirement and the balancing is cheap. We are playing with metadata. We are just changing uh, where uh, what PG is primary out of the three PGs that, or assuming replica three, out of the three PGs, uh, three OSDs which uh, compose of each uh, PG, we just decide which OSD is the primary. So it's, it's cheap. We could do it all the time. You could change it because it's just metadata operation. We are not moving data. It's balancing the read performance again if all the devices are homogeneous but it also since it's uh, something that is cheap and uh, is easy to change uh, first of all we could use it uh, for uh, systems where we the devices are not in the same size this is something that we plan for for the next version if we have smaller devices these smaller devices get less workload because we have less PGs mapped to the smaller devices because we want all the devices to be full with the same level. But since these devices, assuming they have, they have the same performance, get less workload, uh, we could give them more read workload. Assuming we know per pool, uh, we, we have assumption on the ratio between read and write performance, we could actually let the devices, the smaller devices with less PGs could do more read performance they could have more primaries by doing so we reduce load from the the larger devices which gets which are the bottleneck because of the the weakest link in the chain effect and we could give them uh, and they could do more operations uh because we took some read operations from them so we we freed some more uh, performance for them so basically we could use this uh this mechanism in the future version to have to squeeze more performance uh, out of, out of the the same system by uh, uh, taking the devices which are not fully loaded and fully load them, so every all the devices will be fully loaded, and this is something even more advanced. We could do something to dynamically uh, um, respond to changes due to no performance fluctuations. So we might have network problem, we might have noisy neighbors, we might have all kinds of things that create one node suddenly performs a, a, a start to underperform and since it's not performing well 
it becomes a, a weakest link in the chain since uh, the, the balancing, the read balancing is really cheap. Uh, we could uh, immediately, or w when we identify this phenomena, decide that we take the reads out of this node, and this node will be for write only for some a, a specific um, uh, a, for some a, a period until it is fixed, and still uh, uh, um, diminish the, the the impact of the weakest link in the chain. It still could become the weakest link in the chain only for the writes, but not for the reads. Uh, by the end of my stats, also, uh, uh, there is an, um, we are talking about changing primaries. We, we have the feature of read from non-primary. This is also not necessarily good solution for performance. It improves the performance because it reads from the closest uh, 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 OSD. So it's, it's less work to get to this OSD. But if you have high workload, uh, uh, let's assume that we have uh, uh, Steph on on two uh, or three uh, data centers, and uh, we assume that uh, we read from uh, from the closest one, so we also read from the same data center. So still under high read load, uh, the bottleneck would become uh, the data centers that comes from this workload. So uh, what we suggest, but not the mechanism that we implemented, but the ideas that are uh, that we we put here could be also used to do some kind of dynamic balancing. Saying, okay, under uh, above some workload, I'm skipping the or I'm changing the read from non-primary and doing only 80% read from non-primary and the rest going to other uh, uh, to other uh, data center to save the workload. It's it's using the same idea, but it's not a mechanism that we implemented. This will require a bit more work. But still, the, this, uh, what I'm trying to say, that they apply to do, they, they, they're not apply, sorry, the need to apply advanced read balancing is applicable also when you use a read from non-primary. We, we are working on changing primary on the metadata, but if someone has the requirement to do this for read from non-primary, this is something that could be done by uh, changing the way that you select the read from non-primary uh, in the clients. If anyone uh, wants to play with this idea, it's beyond the scope of this presentation, but please drop me uh, a message and I'll be happy uh, to explain uh, what can be done. Next slide, please. So uh, currently we have uh, on homogeneous uh, 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 systems, we don't have any active balancing code, but the crash under distribution works pretty well on larger clusters, uh, but uh, it's not necessarily smaller systems tend to be less balanced and we saw some extreme uh, uh, um, um, examples of these like, OSD that gets one primary and another gets like 15 primaries uh, in, in the same cluster. Uh, and the the reason that we, we start coming now is that uh, we started uh, applying Ceph to uh, small Kubernetes or OpenShift uh, clusters and we see this more and more. So the first thing that we're going to show now uh, solves uh, the, the, the read balancing we show now are going to solve the problem of the smaller clusters that are not balanced because the crush statistics doesn't work well for them. It's not the case for larger uh, clusters. For larger clusters, they tend to be uh, heterogeneous over time. It's very difficult to keep large clusters and, and keep it with devices with exactly the same performance at exactly the same size. When you start expanding the cluster, you add new devices, probably new technologies, or it's not new technology, it will be the same technology, HEDSDD and VME, but from from an economic perspective, from the, the, the return to the dollar, you will buy larger devices and you start getting devices with different sizes. Uh, and this is something we're going to uh, solve in the next version using the same infrastructure, but doing some, um, 
more sophisticated uh, a policy, but something really, really simple relative to, to the size of this. It's just a new calculation. So uh, the conclusion is that uh, in reef, the rebalancer is applicable mainly, mostly to, to smaller clusters, but we want to uh, change read balancer, and that's the terminology, that's why we say this, uh, to workload balancer, which will take into account the, the more than just read of the pool, but the entire workload on, on each OSD. And this is planned for the next version, and it will be based on the infrastructure, and will be pretty simple to implement based on what we currently have. Uh, uh, if we want to do things that relates to the read from non-primary, it would be we require some additional work. And if you want to do something that does something that dynamically change things based on the behavior of the cluster, we need to have a bit more work on monitoring the cluster, understanding what's going on, that we have some places uh, in the cluster that per, uh, underperform and try to take load for them. It's all, <clears throat> all of this is when we know what we want to do, uh, it would be easy to do because it's, it would be just a, a, a pretty simple function that creates the, the desired uh, configuration that we want, and we will work on this once we know. But, but in in some cases, knowing what is the the what we want to do requires monitoring. So it could be more or less. Um, uh, complex to implement based on our requirements, but at least the first version, taking into account the next version, so taking into account the device size, is something that is pretty simple, and we plan on doing this in in the next version. So next slide. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to present two PRs that uh, I added to Reef, and they are going to uh, actually uh, be used by the actually uh, uh, the, the actual uh, uh, balancer code, which Laura is going to present in a minute. So, and, and I, I, sorry, I didn't mention this. Uh, read balancing is only for replicated pool. For erasure coding, uh, it's way more complex. And if we do the fast mode of erasure coding, it tries to read from all the, all the OSDs at once, so we can't even save on this. It's only for replicated pool. So the first thing that we added, we added read balance score. We see here it's uh, in the short term in the command, the OSD pool LS detail, the, the shorter form. We see that we have a pool number six. I marked it because we will see the number later. It's replicated and we had read balance score. Read balance score, the, it's actually what it means. It's the, the most loaded OSD, how much it's, more loaded than the optimum. So here we say that the most loaded OSD is 1.5. The, 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 the optimal score is one. If we get score of one, the system is fully balanced for read. So here it says that uh, roughly the, the, the read balance, uh, the, the most loaded OSD, which will become under load, the weakest link in the chain, gets uh, 150, uh, percent more than the optimal, which means uh, it will become uh, um, the, the, the weakest link in the chain when other OSDs would be roughly 66%, uh, two thirds uh, full. So it's, it's, th that's the meaning of, of this score roughly, which means that under load, we are going to, to, to get to stand to this OSD, uh, 1.5 of the load that it should get, uh, 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 in optimal conditions. And therefore, it's going to become the, the weakest link in the chain and, and start, uh, and block the system. For razor coding, it just doesn't, for razor code, uh, pools, it just doesn't exist. We don't see it. So next slide, please. So uh, I explained this uh, before, the score uh, 1.0 is optimal. Uh, all scores are in the range from 1.0 to replica count. Replica count is the worst possible case. And uh, roughly, it's not 
exact because you could do a bit more than this, but roughly a score of 1.2 is 20% aggregation, 1.5 is 50% aggregation. It's, it's not, it's just easier to explain it this, but, but that's a good, good, good approximation, uh, uh, even though it's not 100% uh, accurate, but it's a good one. So we, we, when we see a 1.5 and we re reduce it to 1.2, we actually saved about 30%. Instead of 50% degradation, we get 20% degradation we saved. So next slide, please. So that's, that's the first, uh, first PR. And actually, for this, we also, uh, uh, if we get, uh, uh, we want more information, so we, we issue the same command. Uh, L, uh, OSD Poodle's details, but with a JSON uh, format or XML format, which they produce exactly the same output. So we get a, a more than this. So uh, the number that we saw before is what I call score acting, is the read score based on the acting primaries. It's not on the stable configuration, the acting, because if you see some performance uh, degradation. We want to, to understand what's going on. What's going on now? What is important is the acting uh, acting primaries. That's what uh, shows it. But but in the in the full version, we, we get a score of the acting and the stable. So the stable configuration, optimal score. Uh, it's not always a, a one uh, because when we have fractions, one you need all the, the, the stars to be in the same line, so you, the number is one, but sometimes uh, because of fractions and because of the number of PGs, number of OSD, then it's, it's a, a little more than one. And we have row score. This is uh, where, uh, um, this is a situation where all the devices are homogeneous, the numbers are well, fit well, and um, we, we Oh, we don't have any acting, uh, uh, any, any OS is out the acting and the stable is the same configuration. And, uh, all the devices have the same, uh, primary affinity and, uh, the, the same weight. Uh, we take into account the primary affinity of OSD, which is the user tells us to, to put less read load on specific OSDs up to zero, obviously. So uh, here uh, we don't we, we see that the the, the weighted the, and all, all the scores are uh, are one and in a minute we we'll see what happens when we change a bit the primary affinity but obviously when we 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 change uh, the primary affinity uh, we can't uh, do uh, optimal uh, 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 configuration because the, the user asked us not to do this so next slide and when we go to the next slide. Uh, we see what happened uh, when we play the beat and not all the devices are the same, uh, have the same primary affinity. So we, again, score acting and so score stable because acting and stable are the same, but the optimal score now is different. And the reason it's different is because the, there are OSDs that we can't give them all the primaries that we want to give. The row score is also different. And if you see the score, score acting is actually row score acting divided by the optimal score. So it still have the same meaning. Uh, it, it's correct that the optimal score does not represent the optimal performance of the system if we didn't have the limitation of the primary affinity. But the score acting says of how much I lose, uh, how much uh, uh, performance I lose relative to the limitation that the user gave me with primary affinity. So it's, um, the raw score divided by optimal score give you the, the real score. So that's, that's uh, important. We also see that the primary affinity by weight uh, is and the average primary affinity. We see that it's not one because the, the user asked us uh, uh, to put uh, less load on some of the devices. <coughs> and uh, again, all the numbers here are the same because uh, we have uh, the same weight. Uh, it's, uh, if we had the different OSD with different weights in different capacity, uh, we would see different numbers here. And uh, uh, it wouldn't be uh, exactly the, the same as it is now. Uh, but that's, that's uh, advanced details if you really want to, to go into uh, 
uh, the, the algorithm of calculating this score and try to improve it. Uh, next slide, please. So the next thing that we did is we uh, I, we added a new command, actually a pair of commands, uh, pg atma primary, which takes a pg and change the primary with one of the OSDs, which is part of this pg. You, it's not moving data. It's changing the order of the pgs in uh, uh, of the OSDs in the PG. So we're not moving data, and we, if we give OSD, which is not part of the PG, you will get an error message. And it's a sister command that RM PG up my primary, which means returns to the default. So uh, we talked about uh, 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 pool six. So we, that's the pool that I showed before. It was in green. I said we'll use it, so we use it here now. So we see that a, a PG 6.1, the situation is that the primary is one and the uh, order is one, three, two. Then we issue the command, the uh, PG up my primary uh, of 6.1 to three. So we want OCD three to be the primary. Uh, we get the message marked in yellow, change primary to OCD three. And when we issue the same command of PG brief again, we see that now, the PG looks like 312, and uh, it's changed, and this change is obviously is kept. It's kept in OSD map, and it's uh, transferred to all the PGs and everything. So this command is actually used to change a uh, primary per PG. And uh, next slide, please. And now uh, I'm giving the, the presentation uh, to Laura. Thanks, Josh, for going through all of that. So um, on to my part of the presentation, I'll explain um, the high level design of the framework we've implemented. Um, and so as not to go into too much detail, I'll kind of summarize, but so uh, two important functions make up the read balancers framework. The first is a function called calc desired primary distribution. And this can be thought of as a policy function that can be changed in the future based on um, enhancements uh, that we make. And the second function is uh, balanced primaries. And this function is the overall balancing algorithm. This is the, I would say, like the tree trunk of um, the, the framework. Uh, this is the core of the algorithm, which uh, shouldn't change. This is how we balance reads. And all of this code is located, will be located in the OSD map uh, code along with where the uh, capacity balancer is also located for anybody who's uh, curious about making future contributions. So um, a deeper dive into uh, the function calc desired primary dis distribution. Overall, it calculates the optimal amount of primary PGs that should be allotted to each OSD per pool. And we do this by first checking that the pool we're balancing is replicated because um, this does not, this uh, the read balancer is not meant for erasure coded pools. Next, we find the replica count balancing. Then we find the number of PGs on each OSD. And then we calculate the desired distribution of primaries for each OSD, which is the number of PGs on that OSD divided by the replica count times the primary affinity of that OSD. And this is where, uh, if you change the primary affinity of an OSD, this is where we take that into account. And lastly, we stretch the desired uh, primary distribution for each OSD so that the total distribution is equal to the total number of PGs in the cluster and uh, this piece is mainly applicable when primary affinity is adjusted on an OSD, say you set an OSD, uh, the primary affinity equal to zero. Um, and then a deeper dive into the uh, balance primaries function. Uh, what does this function do? This is the function that actually does the read balancing. And we do this by first uh, using the first function to find the optimal primary distribution for each OSD. 
Next, we calculate by how much each OSD deviates from the optimal distribution. Um, for instance, an OSD could have uh, two more primaries than it should, or it could be under by one primary. So this is where we find out how by how much it deviates. And then based on the above deviations, we swap uh, PGs or primary PGs so that each OSD gets as close to its optimal distribution as possible. And the step, uh, in the step, we ensure that primaries are only swapped um, between OSDs on the same PG so that there's no data movement involved. And then uh, finally, we return the new, new PG mappings and the total number of changes. How might these functions change in the future? So the first one, calculate a uh, calc desired primary distribution. This implementation can be thought of as phase one, since we currently assume all devices are identical. Future improvements uh, might involve enhancing the policy uh, so that we put more read load on smaller disks, which are known to have less write load. As for the primary, balance primaries function, uh, aside from any enhancements or optimizations, the basic structure of this function will not change. And uh, it can be, we can think of it as the base tree trunk uh, that can grow future optimizations or enhancements, but the overall algorithm um, will be as it is. So now I'll move uh, to some live demos of uh, the primary, the read and uh, a couple of notes. So uh, Josh was explaining uh, the new uh, commands that we've implemented. Uh, PG primary, or uh, it's PG at map, uh, yeah, PG at map primary. So uh, in this demo, we use a different command called primary temp. And this is because uh, the PG at map primary commands haven't been merged yet. Um, but the only difference between these two commands is that primary temp uh, is more of a, a temporary solution where it temporarily adjusts the acting set. But for the pur purposes of this demo, uh, this will work out fine. And uh, and we the the future command will be uh, available for reef. And um, lastly, screenshots of this demo are available at the end of the presentation if you would like to view them in that form. And I also have um, a GitHub repository of all of the scripts I use and um, some steps on how you can uh, do the demos on your own. All right, so first I'll uh, check to see that the cluster is on. Okay, perfect. I'm doing these on uh, VSTAR clusters. So with this first uh, demo, we're going to do it uh, so that we're not uh, we're not adjusting primary affinity. That one's already too. Uh, this one is we're not adjusting primary affinity, and um, I'll show you what that looks like now. So first, we'll check the cluster. Um, since I set this up on a VSTAR cluster, what I did was I set it up and I let the cluster settle um, and I let the capacity balancer um, move the PGs so it should be uh, capacity balanced, with, but we'll check that in a moment. Next, we'll check the pool details for the current read balancer score. And um, as you can see, pool six, which is default RGW control, has a rebalance score of 1.62. And we can see that that score is a bit above um, the optimal uh, score of one, which it should have, uh, meaning that the read balance would be completely balanced. So we'll try to improve uh, the score. The next step here is to get the latest copy of our OSD map. And always we want to make sure that the capacity is, is balanced first. So what I did was I ran the upmap capacity balancer from the OSD map tool on uh, the OSD map that we just grabbed um, to make sure that the capacity is balanced. 
And in this case, uh, it, is the, it is already balanced, so we don't need to do anything here. Next, I'll run the read balancer. And what I did here is uh, kind of like an offline version using the OSD map tool where we can feed in the OSD map and um, see it's sort of like a dry run of what the uh, read balancer will suggest doing to balance your uh, primaries. So before, uh, we can see that OSD map or uh, OSD zero had, uh, they all have primary affinities of one different uh, number of primaries allotted to them. This is just what the VSTART cluster set up um, when it was, uh, when I started it up. And this OSD has too many primaries. Uh, this OSD has uh, too little. This one has too many. Um, and the score is above one. So after uh, using the read balancer to uh, rebalance the primaries, we got the score uh, improved down to one. And uh, we see that there was a total of nine changes that were suggested here. And we can check to see those changes um, by checking the, the out file that we passed through. And um, since I'm in a vstart cluster, I've, I've pre prefixed these with a, a dot slash bin. Um, but if you were using it on a normal cluster, you wouldn't see that. Um, see the suggestions that the read balancer has made. Um, it says to move this, uh, this PG over to this OSD and et cetera. So we can apply the, the, those suggestions to a live system if we choose um, by using source on the, uh, that out file. Since these are just Ceph commands, um, you can also run them yourself um, or you can do it this way. So now we'll check the pool details again and we can see that pool six uh, default RGW control, we originally had a score of 1.62 and now the rebalance score has improved uh, to one, uh, which means the reads are a lot better balanced. That's the end of that demo. And uh, uh, Mike, is it okay if I do one more demo or should I quit here since it's nine? Or since we're on oh, you can keep. You could continue. Okay, this won't take too long. So I'll check on uh, this cluster to make sure it's okay. Awesome, it is. So this demo is similar to the first one, except um, now we're gonna change uh, primary affinity and I'll show you how that uh, is a little bit different. First, we'll check the Ceph status. And I should have said this for the previous demo, but we're working with four OSDs um, and a total of 184 This is the extra step uh, that wasn't in the first demo, but here we're going to change the primary affinity to uh, OSD2, and we're going to set it to zero. And normally primary affinity is one for all of them, that's the default setting, but this means that uh, if, if I'm a user, I'm telling OS, uh, I don't want any primaries to be given to OSD2. Um, I don't want any reads on OSD2. Now I'll use this command to make sure that there are no primaries on, uh, on any of the PGs on the, the pool that we're gonna balance. And I can check this by, I, I've grepped here to minimize the output, uh, but this column here is all of the, um, the acting primaries. And then this here represents the up primaries and we can see that there's no uh even though two is part of these pgs it's not it's not given the uh, primary anywhere it's only three and zero that have been set to primaries so now we'll check the pool details for the current rebalancer score and we'll improve the the same pool as we did before pool six uh this default rgw control 
And for this one, since we've adjusted primary affinity, the read balance score is now 1.41. So it's still over. We'll get the latest copy of our OSD map. And then we'll run the capacity balancer to make sure that capacity is balanced. And in this case also, we don't need to make any changes here because capacity is already balanced. Now we'll run the read balancer, focusing on pool six default RGW control. And before, uh, so again, none of the, uh, since we set primary affinity to, on OSD two to zero, um, the read balancer should not be giving any primaries to OSD two. And we can see that's the case here. So uh, the, the distribution was a bit off where OSD zero had 11 PGs, which is over the amount it should have. Um, OSD3 had 15, which is definitely over. And OSD1 had uh, six primaries, which that one's under and could stand to take on a few more primaries. The previous score was 1.4. And then after, with the read balancer suggestions, we can see we've lowered it down to 1.03 with a total of uh, six changes suggested. And we can see again what the read balancer suggests from the out file. And these are all regular subcommands that you can run yourself or we can apply it live to our system. Let that go. And then finally, we'll check uh, to see how the score has improved. And for pool six, at a score of 1.41 and we're down to 1.03. So that's how uh, you would run the read balancer uh, in this offline version on, uh, your, on your live system. And I'll stop there. I had one, uh, one more slide to go through, but I'll just say verbally that um, the future uh, improvements would be to um, add this uh, add this as a non-offline version, but as a, a live version, just as the capacity balancer is on by default um, with the balancer module. Um, and we plan to do some more upstream testing and performance testing around this feature um, as it's added to Reef. And um, that's all I had for uh, these demos. Does anybody have any questions or anything about uh, the presentation? I see one. I see several questions. Josh, have you been answering them so far? I answered some of the questions that I saw. <laughs> there is a question that arrived now about the primary affinity uh, per pool. Uh, primary affinity is existing feature and it's not per pool. And it doesn't, I, I think it doesn't make sense to do it uh, per pool as a feature. The idea as I see it from primary, the, the only place that I've seen um, someone actually using primary affinity uh, in production is I think we, we had a use case when user wanted uh, to use the capacity, the spare capacity that they have on the system devices for the Ceph cluster, but since it's system devices, they didn't want to put too much load on this. So they said, let's put it with primary affinity zero. So we only keep their information for writes, but we don't read from them. Uh, so this is something, it's, it's uh, something of the device, but uh, when we talk about read from non-primary, which is something different, it may make sense to put it before. I'm not sure how it is implemented now, whether it is uh, or not. Uh, uh, it's uh, now about the read balancer. Uh, theoretically, you could implement primary affinity per pool because as Laura explained, what we actually have we have a policy function which calculates the target configuration that you want, uh, that you want, and then we have something that 
takes the current configuration and bring it to the target configuration. So if you, dis and uh, this one, the policy works for full. So if you decide that uh, for some reason uh, you don't want uh, in your pool uh, that all the OSDs with uh, a primary uh, primary number index, like three, five, seven, eleven, uh, they would not be primary. You could implement this. You would. What you need to do is make sure that in your desired configuration, uh, they would get uh, no primaries, and then uh, the the other function would give it to you. So uh, not primary, but prime numbers. If you want that, uh, your OSD, these prime numbers would not be primaries. If that's what you get, so you could implement this. It's not. Uh, if you have the use case, yes, you could do it. The, the thing about this policy that this uh, uh, po policy is something that uh, is uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, so, and I see now Ilya said about uh, the read from non primary is client, and this is client side. So, uh, if you want to do something more sophisticated, as I said before. A do partial read from non-primary that do it up to certain level and then move to uh, to also to others. You could do it on the client side. Again, this is more more complex. It's beyond the scope of here. But if someone wants to talk about this, uh, you could do it. We actually we thought about implementing uh, uh, this feature through client changes and. Uh, Use uh, instead of uh, creating uh, this configuration on on the metadata and the changing the PGs, do something to the client so they would uh, uh, they would choose primaries uh, differently than they do act now and use the read from non-primary feature, and we consider this as a technical uh, viable technical uh, solution and decided to drop it because it's too complex. It was too complex to implement it. We could find a simpler solution how to implement this. But if you want something really sophisticated, uh, you could do this uh, by uh, changing the way uh, the client decides where to read from when the client supports read from non-primary. So you could do something uh, way more sophisticated uh, by changing the client. We decided that uh, for 90%, at least from what we want, uh, it's not needed, and we went to to simpler and safer solution than this. But it's not um, it's not something that uh, can't be done. It, it's uh, if you have a, a specific uh, interesting requirements uh, that are not met by just metadata changes, and you have something really dynamic that changes things. Uh, uh, um, uh, that that uh, doesn't change the configuration, but decides per IO what to do, the, the way to implement it in client, and, and it is possible. Not that it's yeah, and it's actually, all of, like, to some extent, it actually already exists uh, because uh, for the read from non primary uh, feature, uh, or it's also sometimes referred to as replica reads, uh, apart from the mode uh, which, you know, kind of makes sense to everyone, which is uh, you set up a cross uh, uh, location rule and then uh, direct your reads uh, to, to, the, to the most local availability zone, if that makes sense. Apart from that mode, uh, there is also a mode uh, which is, has always been there, so it's like many years old, um, where the reads are just uh, sent to random uh, OSDs in the PG. So if, like, instead of doing something really sophisticated and, you know, really dynamic, if you're not satisfied with the uh, with the kind of predefined balance of results because your workloads, you know, just change too quickly or too dynamic, you could just uh, set uh, the, uh, like, enable the, uh, uh, the the client side feature uh, for reading from uh, non primary OSDs and set the mode instead of the mode uh, instead of localized, which would attempt to go to the most local OSD it can, uh, set it to it's also confusingly named balance. <laughs> so it set it instead of localized to balance and it would go just to random OSD in the PG and you would get most of the 
uh, of that you know dynamic behavior uh, that way, and it, it would be quote unquote balanced uh, for free uh, just because of the uh, hopefully pseudo random nature of the workload. Yeah, the, the thing that I thought is that I, I think that there might be some workloads when you want to do what you say you know, with a, a bit of minor change that you will give the distribution for the random. So it won't be full random, but you say, okay, for the for the, the one for the local OSD, uh, if it availability is on send 60% and the other 40% distribute randomly. That's what I said. That could be, you know, the ultimate uh, uh, control uh, over uh, uh, what you do. That you want more more uh, requests to go to the local, but not all the requests. So that's and and this is I guess a minor change uh, uh, because of the current existing situation. You have the random, but you need a bit more control. But uh, again, I'm not sure it's needed. It, let's say it's it's if you talk about this, uh, you look at this from um, theoretical perspective of how to fully control the workload. I'm not sure that it's really. Uh, uh, but but if someone has super dynamic requests that they want to handle and they can't handle this with the static changes to metadata. That's an option. Um, any more uh, questions? So thank you. We will have this in uh, in Reef, as Laura said. Uh, in Reef, it would be offline. It would be you'll have to opt in, run it manually in order to get it. In future version, as the balancer, we'll probably uh, add this as a plugin to the manager that would run it automatically uh, if you wanted to do so. And uh, we will add at least uh, the um, the uh, into consideration the, the weight or the the capacity of the how much data you have on each device. By the way, I didn't mention this. It also could could improve performance if you use uh, use mixed uh, technology uh, OSDs in the same pool. It's but it's not recommended. But if you happen to have uh, for various reason you you have pools in, in which you have devices from multiple uh, uh, technologies like uh, SSDs and NVMEs, you may um, uh, uh, use uh, non-equal balancing in order to improve the performance. Uh, it's not recommended, but it happens with clusters that evolve over time. It may happen. You you could take a lot. You could make a lot to 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 uh, take to um, to make the 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 uh, the weakest link in the chain effect come later. There is limit to what you could do. You can't you can't do. If you have, uh, I heard about a user that has a devices of one terabyte and then decide decided to add devices of six terabytes to the same cluster. Okay, this is something that we, you can't compensate for everything. Even if you, you know you say all the reads are for the smaller devices, you can't compensate one to six uh, when you have replica three or replica two. You can't compensate on one to six uh, size differences. But on some level, uh, uh, we, we can compensate and, you know, we could do what we could do. It's not it's not magic, but um, Reasonable config configuration, we could uh, improve uh, performance on uh, non uh, on heterogeneous uh, clusters. Again, we won't be able to mitigate for HDD and NVMe, so fully mitigate on the same uh, pool. But there are things which we can mitigate, and we will add them to to the next version once we pass the first release and people start using this and we all agree that it's a good and working feature.
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And I've shared um, a, a link to a GitHub repository of where I have slides and the scripts I used. I'll also share anything with Mike um, so Mike can share. Thank you, everybody. Stefan, we plan to have it just in a reef, available for reef. Thank you for asking the questions.